<laughs> All right, thanks for having me. Um, Picket House in Northcote, uh, a, a gorgeous little corner block um, with a laneway to the west as well. So there really is sort of three frontages on this block. Um, pretty tired uh, house um, sitting at the top of the block and sloping down to the west towards the backyard. Um, Zoe and Marez, um, a beautiful couple that had just moved over from WA with their two gorgeous girls. They came to us with a very low budget, the kind of budget that we, any of us would typically say no to and just said, we know we're asking for a lot, but you know, can we um, get you to sort of prioritize how we spend this budget? So this, this was a low budget sort of high return um, brief for us. Um, and so what we decided to do was to get steel out of the project um, and to just do a very simple battened architecture we wanted something a bit more. So we wanted to connect with the local area where, you know, you guys know Northcote, there's a lot of weatherboard, there's a lot of um, sort of cute timber work, external timber work and picket fences. So it, what we really worked on was the idea of, a, a you know, the battened architectural box um, but with the theme of pickets, um, embellishing it. It's beyond that, the, the screen, the functional waterproof line is simple painted um, cement sheet with really high, um, value insulation in behind that and of course like all screened sort of rain shields it uh, allowed us to put a lot of the services on the outside of the building rather than burying them in the building which makes it a bit cheaper to build and very easy to service as well. Um, in terms of the existing footprint it had a really cute entry off the corner that came along the veranda and in through a stained glass door however it got really problematic from there where you, you ended up internalized dark spaces they were all their sleeping spaces so it was really odd for a, a visitor to come through and then once you got into the the sort of the shared spaces the family spaces it was really dislocated from the backyard because of the um the fall down the side which we saw as an opportunity um to do something quite interesting with with levels within the very tight budget that we had um we stuck with the theme of the old as we often do uh, in our old ads, the old house being the dormitory space, the sleeping space, um, didn't have a budget to upgrade it much. So it's still just as cold as it was, um, but they're sleeping spaces. So just chuck on a thicker doona. And then using the stairs as a, a bridging element between the two, and then having a highly sustainable, passively heated, um, uh, you know, thermally robust new living space. In terms of setback, we got to play with this a little bit because of the multiple orientations. We decided to, as we're doing so many projects, to zero lot it, so to build the new extension right on the southern boundary, um, but we've disguised that as a fence. Um, so that allows us to, and, and then we basically have all of our utility spaces in there. So our bin storage, our pantry, our powder room, our laundry, um, and then everything else, the living spaces faces out towards the sunny northern garden um, with that bridging element in between the new entry that, uh, as we do in many of these projects, new entry that is in the gap between the, the, the new and the old. And then the upper box uh, becomes the eave. So passive solar line cutting out all summer sun, but allowing a lot of winter sun to come in <clears throat> and to heat up the, the uh, on ground slab. But then the back of that box or you know, the southern edge of that box is actually lined up with the facade of the original house. So it has sort of a discussion with it um, uh, in terms of sort of scale, uh, even though the original house is just one story. And then we don't like bringing cars onto a site. I just think it's a waste of space. So a lot of people ask for it. So we always try to think about it in a different way. So you can bring a car in, but for us, that's just really a cupboard outdoor space um, just with pebbles on the ground so when you get rid of the car it's just an extension of your uh, of your outdoor space above that is just a, this is where we saved a lot of money so we were pumping in all the money down to the living spaces um, and then it's just a very simple rumpus room upstairs with this gorgeous void over the top of the living space and uh, a big deck in the back yard which really is which is offering you know great views back to the city and over Northgate. So we end up with these multiple frontages, which was really sort of intimidating, but also really fun. Because even when you come up Aberdeen Street, it presents itself in a certain way that would typically be the back facade. 
in terms of how, you know, it could have been very aggressive how we built on that boundary, but you can see what we've done is actually try to pick up a datum from the original brick fence and just push that straight through. So you end up with a new picket fence, new entry gate, and the rest of the fence is actually utility space. And upon entry, you actually end up on this half level. So you can go half a level up to the old house, half a level down to the new living spaces, which is exactly 900 mil, so it's a bench height, or half a level from the old house up to the rumpus room. And so the entry is there on the right, the entry gate, sliding through just over some pebbles. Eventually we'll get some creepers growing over that bridge link in between uh, the new and the old. And you arrive at this, um, this level where you can go through the half levels, either up or down to the kitchen area. And you can see where that bench is exactly the same height as the entry. And there's these lovely sliders behind that. So you can have that completely open. So as people come in, they can wave and say hi. And we love our clients really getting involved. So that cute little detail is that part of the stair has been flipped over and used um, as sort of a leftover remnant as part of the bench. And then all of the, um, the, the bench just continues through. So you have outdoor sort of kitchen happening and all of the storage in that big blue wall, all the utility space to the south, such as the laundry and the rest. And some reclaimed doors they actually brought over with them from WA, which was pretty cool. Um, and then over the living space is where we've got this two-story void, um, which is gorgeous. And then above that is just really simple, affordable space for the girls, which, you know, it just allows them to grow up and become you know, young adults here, but there's still that really beautiful connection between levels. And the deck out the back, which actually has this great connection to Aberdeen Street, Aberdeen Grove. And then of course, Throughout the house, there's these little nods to the, the picket motif. So whether it's the deck is actually pickets, there's even a little threshold and, and, and door the finger pulls that are shaped the same way. We spent all that, thank you. We spent all that money downstairs in the you know thermally broken double glazing and upstairs, we just kept it very simple. Still a really great size window that allows you to look down into the backyard, but reducing the glazing as much as possible. And then just having those shutters that can protect the glazing in summer. Um, so that's Picket House. We spent all in about 700 grand on that, which is pretty much almost half what we would typically take a job on of that, you know, sort of area. Um, 